we do a lot of cases, right? A lot of discussion, a lot of in-person, standing up in a group of very brilliant 80 plus people and talking about you know your perspective in front of people. And once you do that enough times, that iteration, I think that was like a very, very useful and also very practical part of the whole, the whole learning experience. So Harvard Business School education, uh, people have some strong feelings about it. What was your own experience? as well as just maybe some highlights, both inside the classroom, outside the classroom. My experience, I, I think, is very unique because I think a lot of people come in with a lot of expectations of what they want to get out of it, what they want to put into it and all that. I think I kept an open mind throughout the whole entire process, and I thought it was amazing. Like, the people, for sure, from so many countries internationally, the the staff, the, the professors are very impressive as human beings. And um, just the whole experience put together and being immersed back after a couple years of experience made it very, very, I think, rewarding. Of course, also challenging at times, right? So we have the case method, which I think is the best way to teach the MBA program. It was, I'd say, like a big part of the learning. You want to just throw out either some professors or classes that you feel were particularly impactful for you? Yeah, um, it was extremely hard to uh, narrow down the top few professors. Um, and I did this during my reflection period back in back before graduating. Uh, at Harvard, your first year is pretty fixed, I think. So those those were good classes. But I think the highlight of uh, the MBA program was year two, where you had the opportunity to choose your professor, choose your classes, and also choose your schedule. First year, it's rigorous. They tell you what to do, A, B, C, D, like one, two, three, this is when you're coming to class. Second year is very free. You get to pick your classes, your time, shop around, and also pretty much craft what you want. My first one um, is actually launching Tech Ventures by um, Reza Sachu. He he was he's an entrepreneur by um, by training. Oh, I wouldn't say training, but by experience. And he inspired a lot, me, and I'm sure the whole classroom of students, thinking of um, phrasing ways to to best take risks, to to explore new ideas, to be open to to that inner gut feeling that most of us sometimes don't adhere to. And I think like his mindset of of just like what to do post MBA and de-risking that venture that in, at some, you know, that someday you might have um, really inspires me. And I think at some point I will do something like that, hopefully in the near future. And then the other two were amazing as well. Um, managing international trade investments, MITI uh, with Meg Rithmeyer, amazing class, a lot of interesting geopolitics political conversations and something I just never thought about from um, from prior prior to business school. And it just made informed me that people who do business in different countries, they sometimes know as as much or as little as we do when they do it initially. And it's really a function of really trying to make things work. And it, it was a very sobering factor that sometimes there is factors outside of our control, especially when it becomes international. And the last class, and it was amazing class, CVCR, Creating Value Through Corporate Restructuring, and I did not initially think that would be a class that I would take, but the professor, Kristen Mugford, was amazing. She demystified like some of the biggest restructuring processes um, in the past decade or two. And it blew my mind to think that there were many different investing strategies surrounding companies going bankrupt, literally. And um, those three were, were definitely my, my top three highlights. And there were so many other good ones, and it was so hard to force rank them. Such such good classes. No, terrific. Then, how about what was happening outside of the classroom? Were you involved in a club, a conference, anything in particular that was um, particularly impactful for you? But I think the two that stuck out to me um, was VCPE. Um, that's the the venture capital and private equity club. So I was president, uh, one of the co presidents, the year uh, my second year, and we did a lot of great social professional um, conferences. And some and a lot of good activities, and I think like having a really good crew and a good budget, and obviously the, I'd say like the industry, industry clout, like we were able to put put on a great, a lot of great events for for students and also alumni. The other thing I picked up during business school was soccer. Um, I've always been a hand eye coordination type of person, and this one was my foray into a very different skill set, right? Like foot eye, um, ninety five plus percent of the the my teammates were all male, so that gave any female a good chance to get on the get on the field um, at any game. So I personally really enjoyed it. Got a lot better with 
with it and had something to kind of work towards and obviously had good good friends and teammates come out of that. You were just telling me you were at your one year Harvard Business School reunion. So now you can reflect back a little bit in terms of, so from a day-to-day perspective, how do you think your HBS education is impacting you? Are there elements to it that you're surprised that HBS was particularly valuable or are there elements to the HBS education you're simply not using now? Just as you start really putting that education to work, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? Yeah, I think it HBS, um, the case method, as I mentioned, has been particularly valuable. You read so many cases, you read stories about so many protagonists, and then you realize that in your day to day life, you're you're your own protagonist, right? So I think that's that's one way that I think it's been the most apparent to me. The the friends I've made throughout um, the whole experience is obviously part of my day to day life, and I think that's the most tangible aspect of it. I do think the the overall um, effect of the business school doesn't come into play until five to ten years out, and that's something that I've gleaned from from my friends and also peers in the the industry. They say it really starts coming together a, like a little bit longer post graduation. But for me, the day to days would probably be um, speaking up more in investment committee meetings, team meetings, taking more initiatives when you see fit or don't. And thinking about it from um, a case perspective, right? Like if you were the protagonist, what would you do? And thinking about it from a stakeholder perspective, not just your own opinion, but thinking about it holistically as a team, as an organization, like what should you do? The different perspectives and the the number of stakeholders involved that I that I think I really think about more post post MBA. You know, that that's that's interesting. And, and uh, to flip it around a little bit, so was there anything at HBS that really didn't work for you? Was there anything that now you're not seeing as valuable now that you've been working some? Uh, that's a, that's a tough one because most things are applicable to day to day life since we work in so much teams and we're striving for excellence in everything we do, right? <laughs> well, I think it's also important to be humble when you first go back into the industry at HBS. They really hype you up as the future leaders of the world, or you know what what not. And I think that's all very helpful and valuable. Like you are being put in the shoes of people who are making really big decisions through cases. But once you go back and rejoin the workforce, you have to re, you know, you have to build that trust. You have to either work your way up a ladder, create your own ladder, make the make the world kind of bend to what you want, you know, want your reality to be. And I think that's very challenging um, for anyone, much less a, a post MBA grad. The five to ten year horizon, I think, is when a lot of things that we learn will come in play. And but in the moment, enjoy, you know, enjoy the enjoy the time. Sure, sure, of course. When we started our process, one thing that we spend some time doing is in fact thinking about, okay, what's that first job out of business school, medium term, long term. So at this point, I'm I'm sure that things have have changed and you've grown. How do you see your career going over the next one, three, five, 10 aspirations? Aspirations and reality, I feel will, will definitely have an intersection, but I don't think it'll go exactly the same way. I think in the short term, I think what I'll continue doing is doing private equity, doing tech investing specifically, I think in the medium to long term, what what changed is I might want to start my own business. So either it's an own, my own fund or if I find something convincing, joining another company or starting my own. The rest, I think, will fall into place. Those are, I'd say, like I'm pegging on a few things that I think would be ideal for a, a really exciting, fun, challenging, fulfilling uh, career and also life. I believe like the core you stays and your mindset could evolve if you're open to it. I think that's that's a big thing that I saw in, in myself and my classmates. Oh, that's really interesting. Really, really interesting. And so now from the perspective of, of what happens next, and again, a little bit of a different flavor here, but what happens next? How do you navigate the next one one or two years, really short term in your career? Oh, that's that's always the question for, for everyone, right? It's being able to make a decision with imperfect information is the way to to way to do it, right? Like we're everyone at your MBA program and your future classmates are all very, in my view, very ambitious, smart, talented people. And I think navigating the workplace and I'd say being more of a playing transitioning from an individual contributor to a kind of a little bit of more of a leader is always on at least my mind. So. Working on that, um, thinking of where the most exciting places to play um, and from an investing perspective in the next five to 10 years, even though I imagine one to two years is is particularly important to me. No, that makes sense. So, so, and again, Kathleen, just 
obviously we've gone over a lot of territory at this point. Just whether it's talking to me about the process or whether it's talking to somebody who's two years out, just what else would you say as you think back on your HBS process, both applying, attending, and how it looks now in the rearview mirror? Be present in your two years. Really feel what you're going through. Obviously think about what you're going through, but also keep an open mind, whatever you do. And I think the two years really does pass by super quickly. And so being intentional with how you spend your time, setting some goals for yourself, but also being rigid, both rigid and flexible at the same time with what you want to get out of it. I think those people and my friends who, who have done that got the most out of the experience. I think leaning into just putting yourself out there, being more, more vulnerable, actually, in, in more settings than than not especially in the two years, I think has been particularly high ROI for both figuring out who you are and also getting to know people better. And I think we all come in with this perception of us and we all feel great coming in, right? Like, cause you know, you, you get in, you're like at the top of the world, you're at the school you picked. And I think just kind of layering, taking that back and just having like, taking that ego down and just really getting to know everyone, experiencing things and Learning a lot, I think, is is a big part of the whole thing. So I think defining your values and what you want to get out of it really will put you where I think where you will have a more rewarding MBA experience. Kathleen, that's all the questions I have. So and you've been really super helpful. And again, you were you were really someone great to work with just because you were really open and you were actually very transparent about a lot of things, which people seem to always hold back, but you didn't. And I think we got a great application because of that. I try. Always try, Harold. (laughs) You made it easy. Thank you. Thank you very much.